So you leave on the 20th but you actually arrive in New Zealand on the 22nd. Because of the time, the way it works, you'll be traveling at night here, but you'll be traveling night there also, so you'll be able to sleep, but it's gonna be, you're gonna lose a day somewhere in the universe. <laughs> but one day will just disappear from your life. So basically when I'm down in New Zealand, I will be a day younger than I, <laughs> than I really would be. I How's the gravity down there? Do we stand on the ceiling? You will actually, way less really and you will if you take a step you take a step and then you levitate for a step and you oh, take a step okay. and then you levitate <laughs> is that the magnetic field that does that yeah oh, okay yeah how cool is that that's pretty dope I just got to Lincoln. Um, there's some kids out here playing something, but uh, other workout in. Get a little training session in. Should be good. So all of a sudden, right here in the training, uh, this is kind of where it got interrupted by somebody and I, I, he didn't mean any harm. Nothing bad about him. I don't want to uh, say anything bad, but it definitely was a little weird. It kind of freaked me out because I'm, I'm downtown Portland and I definitely have had my fair share of bad experiences with kind of crazy people from downtown Portland <laughs> interrupting sessions down here at Lincoln. and. Uh, he was just doing his own thing, kind of playing around, but I, got, I mean, I got a little sketched out. Like I've had people try to fight me. This guy over here, just lit up a right next to me. He was coughing and hacking and <laughs> he's an interesting guy. That's the perks of training downtown in a city. And so he was just doing his own thing and just, he was harmless, but just a little, a little interesting. And just the weirdest part was that, is that this field was completely empty and he kept on kind of being right next to me and there's three goals on the field all around here and just right up in my grill. Just a little nervous, you gotta be careful with this kind of stuff sometimes. You put a happy dinner. Because I just need a little more grip on things. For that. So I just decided to pick up all the cones and just head over to the other side of the field where there's just tons of space. Can I, can I take your gander on your ball real quick though? My ball, yeah. I, it's been a while since I've popped this. What do you think of it? I like it. It's just made for heavy feedback. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's for, uh, 
getting that balance. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Huh? Hey. So absolutely beautiful day, good training session in. Again, um, I really don't have much pain, it's just that it just gets a little tight, a little weak, so just continue slowly building up the strength and hopefully uh, that weakness will, will get stronger. Um, training session was interrupted a little bit by a very nice gentleman, but he, he was just a little different, I don't think he meant any harm. Yeah, I was out here for like 40 minutes, so decent. Probably should have only done like 30 minutes, but it was good, really good. So now I'm actually gonna head back to the gym and do some stretching, some mobility work for another like 30 minutes or so. And then I will uh, go home and do my normal day. But yeah, that's the plan. And so now I just wanna talk a little bit about mobility and what I've been doing. And so a lot of times I just take a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball and I use these blocks so I can leverage myself better onto the ball and I find tight spots of my area and I'm just letting my body sink and push into these tight spots to do a little trigger release. So I did a lot of the groin work there on my left groin where I got the surgery. My hips are always, always so tight. So I'm just letting my body slowly fall into those tight spots on the hip. It's very painful, but it, you feel so much more loose afterwards. And this is a lot of like massage therapy, what they do. And I always get uh, tight in the quad, so I'm going in a tight spot, my right quad right here, and just letting my body just really find its own tight spots and work it out. So for sure my groin is getting a lot better. Just the running, I have no twinges, I don't really have any pain. It just still, when I'm doing those workouts, when I'm running and like where, where you saw the field, doing some of those training, especially at the beginning, um, it's, it, there's no pain but it's very weak. And like I said, I wanted to strengthen it. It's, it feels tight, so I'm trying to do a lot of mobility work. I'm getting massaged a lot of my physical therapy sessions. It's just so hard balancing that of like, okay, I wanna get in shape before I go to this preseason, do as much as I can before. I, I, I'm just bored and I wanna train, I wanna do stuff, but yet sometimes the best thing to do is rest. I'm already ahead of schedule. There's no need to really push it. And then you also have to balance out, okay, how much should you actually do to strengthen this up? versus how much is too much or how much is too little. And so it's very, you know, it's hard. It's, it's such a guessing game and listening to your body. And that's why I think you really need a physical therapist when you're coming back from injuries. But um, no matter what, when you're coming back from injury, it's, it's tough. So I talked to Aaron, the owner of Pactera Athletics, and we're all set for the discounted compression shorts and pants, the three quarter pants, everything. I'll show you uh, the four pairs that you can get right now. And again, I'm not taking a cut. He's just knocking down 15% off the price just so you guys can get these for cheaper, have the Become Elite logo. I'll show you all four pairs right now. So you can get these, these are just the normal compression shorts, Become Elite logo, pocket on the side, and the charcoal. You can get these. These are just the compression shorts in black, Become Elite logo, pocket on the side, same exact thing, same material, just in black. You can get these. These are the three quarter pants in charcoal, the Become Elite logo's down here, pocket's still up here. They go about mid-calf, and again, same material, charcoal color. And finally, you can get these. And these are just the same exact thing, but in black. So yeah, again, link is in the description. Those are the four items that you can get. I freaking love them, so soft. All of you guys who already have them have been commenting, emailing, and DMing me just how soft and comfortable they are, which is awesome. The owner, Aaron of Pactera, is so happy with the great feedback he's gotten. But anyway, um, if you want some, go get it. If you don't, then cool. But I'm gonna get some work done, and then I'm going to the Blazers game tonight. I'm always a huge Blazers fan, so I hope they lose. I'm just kidding, I'm playing with my, your face. You know what somebody uh, asked me in the, the comment section the other day though? Hmm. If I had any friends. I saw that. <laughs> but 
Because you're never with anybody. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm really never with anybody. But to answer that, I mean, I, just can you, you, Mom, can you tell people that I have friends? <laughs> and that actually is like a really hard part about being a professional soccer player, especially when you're a lower level professional soccer player and you're traveling from team to team to team. You spend nine months or a year with these guys who develop this great, you know, friendship and bond. You, and then nine months later, when you're finally really getting into the friendship, you have to leave and then everybody goes back to their own countries. Like some of my best friends had to go fly halfway across the world and now they're not playing in America anymore. So that part about being a pro is definitely pretty hard. I went from all my friends in college and then immediately I left all those guys in that city and that state even and I flew over to Germany. I was over in Germany for a long time. I made great friendships over there, had some great teammates and then I left, went to Orange County. Same thing, developed some great friendships, some best friends over there, left for St. Louis. Now I left for St. Louis and now I'm back in Portland and now I'm about to leave from Portland down to New Zealand. So you're constantly going, you're making great friends and having these great experiences and then you're just forced to leave. And it's great because I can go to any city in the world now, pretty much, and have a friend who I've played with or a friend of a friend somewhere. I mean, I can go to Macedonia and hang out with Dragan. I can go over to Denmark and hang out with Sebastian. I can go to New Jersey and see Conrad. I can go to Jamaica and I have tons of Jamaican teammates that I, I've played with there and just so many places. But you don't get that friendships of like four or five years that you've been hanging out with in solid friend group a lot. And then, you know, Portland's where I'm from and Unfortunately, when you get older too, like all of my friends from high school, like my two best friends from high school, one lives in Florida and the other one lives in New York. So we're literally across the entire country from each other. And then my other great friends from high school are down in San Francisco, Denver, and Seattle. So I only have Mike, who you've seen in these videos, um, Mike Zupan, who I work out with sometimes. He's the only real friend that I have in Portland right now. And me. And my, and my, my mom, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, that's probably a serious answer to kind of a funny question, but that's actually something I was like, you know, people don't really see that. You have this great idea of what it's like to be a pro, but a lot of times you don't really understand the hard part, the sacrifices that you make, and the biggest sacrifice is you just don't, you don't live that stable life, and it's very hard to have those friends that you see for years. Thoughts? I think that would be the hardest part about pro sports is that, you know, just like, like I watch the... Portland Trailblazers and I follow them on social media and I see who was friends with who and you know the guys they hang out with and then all of a sudden somebody gets traded and I always think about how sad they must be that like their best friend is leaving and they're going across the country and they'll see him once in a while when they play games but that whole friendship I mean it lasts forever a friendship but it's not the same when you you leave somebody it just kind of changes and I think that would be the hardest part it would be always uprooted and never really being stable and knowing what's going to happen from one year to the next and that's a pretty um, stressful life I think yeah and like I mean if you guys have been watching me for a while when I was in St. Louis I had this amazing great friendship with this guy named Dennis and Dennis you know was he was from Serbia he had pretty good English and we just hung out all the time I thought he was hilarious he was just one of my really close friends on the team and then he pretty much got released or traded from the team halfway through the season he came up to me and said yeah I'm gonna be here for another three or four days and then I haven't seen him since and I mean he's over in Serbia now so it's kind of like I'm, hopefully I'll be able to see him one more time in my life. It's weird though. That'd but be weird. It's it's very weird. It's, it's not like even like, oh yeah, my friend just moved down to California. It's like, yeah. no, my friend went back to Serbia with his old friends over there and there's no reason for him. And I'm going to go from St. Louis to Portland. Yeah. There's no reason for him to come to Portland. There's no real reason for me to go to Serbia. And it's not a quick little plane ride to go visit your friend <laughs> in Serbia. Yeah. You know? Or even like um, we had a teammate that was with us in at St. Louis and he was a great guy. I mean, I wasn't as close with, with him as I was with Dennis, but then he came to training on Friday. He was all normal, whatever. We had the uh, game on Saturday, we played it. And then Sunday we had the day off. I came into training, we all came into training on Monday. And everyone was like, yo, where's where's this guy at? Where's where's Jose? And then all of a sudden it's just like, yo, he, uh, Jose got traded to a different team. And you're like, oh, all right. okay, I didn't get a chance to say bye. That's, the, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't like that. It, it, yeah, that, that part's hard. But then like I said, you get this amazing friendship of this this web everywhere in the world yeah. of friends. In reality, you have more friends than most people. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, you Mom. Have
the Blazers went up by like 30 points and then almost lost the league, but we ended up winning. So, good game. I'm happy. My, it's my mom's birthday. I'm just blinding you while you yeah. drive. It's my mom's birthday tomorrow, so that should be fun. But other than that, this is going to be the end of the video. If you guys like it, I'm not even going to say it. I guess I will. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. For my birthday. For my mom's birthday, yeah. Like, like this... Nice one. Thank you. Like this video for my mom's birthday. If you don't like this video, then you hate my I mom. I will be sad. I um, will be sad. <laughs> you don't want my mom sad. All right. Peace. Yeah.